Hello, I'm Darren again. Welcome to my Mental Health Information and Awareness channel. Now, today's topic is continuing to look at the adult children that have been raised in narcissistic families. And today's focus is going to be on the scapegoat. What's life like for them when they become an adult? Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please check out my other videos on mental health related topics and please consider subscribing to my channel. Now, I've made videos before on narcissistic families and some of the roles within them. But just as a recap, remember that narcissistic family often operates more like a cult. And toxicity is normal. The parent or the parents, they treat the children very differently and they do it to create division and competition. The scapegoat is often the child who is blamed for all of the family's misery, all of the distress. And in that family, love, indeed if love exists or whatever it is they consider love to be, it is conditional and those conditions are often vague. They change from moment to moment, often depending on what mood the parent's in. And in narcissistic families, the toxic parent often feeds off the rivalry, the unhealthy competition between their kids. Now scapegoats, sometimes referred to as the black sheep of the family, they are chosen for different reasons. Now, some may be chosen for what the parent considers to be their weaker, their less intelligent, not as good looking as say the golden child. Sometimes they are chosen because they perhaps look more like the other parent. They get labeled, they often become the angry, the disobedient child and I think a lot of times the reality is they just don't believe the lies that the family's living. More often than not, the scapegoat is quite compassionate, empathic, sensitive and, and this often makes them an ideal target for narcissistic abuse. So they're often blamed, shamed, they're on the wrong end of unkind humour, you know, any achievements, any qualities they have are ignored, especially if there is any remote possibility that they may in some way outshine the golden child. But as I often say, kids aren't kids forever. So what happens to the scapegoat when they grow up? Well, in the narcissistic family, Remember, all of the children become tarnished in some way. However, the scapegoat is often the child who escapes. But we're going to look today at some of the things the adult scapegoat may experience. So first of all, they often struggle with trust. They have difficulty trusting others, trusting themselves even. They may have difficulty asserting themselves, managing their boundaries. They may experience, feel a toxic shame over not what they believe they are, but what they've been led to believe that they are. They find it difficult to ask for help, um, sometimes believing that they don't deserve it, and have difficulty accepting sometimes that other people respect them, like them, even love them. Now, many can test others. They test them to see if they're being genuine or not about how much they care. You know, this can be problematic in the sense that sometimes the very things they do, like creating a little bit of drama or whatever, just to try and get some kind of reassurance, just to see how much this other person cares about them, it can be the very thing that drives those people away. They get bored with it, they get sick of it, whatever. And this becomes something of a self-fulfilled prophecy that they are unlovable. Like given how they were raised, Remember, authority was always used against them. So as adults, they can be resistant to authority figures. Even if that authority figure is trying to help them or do something in their own best interest. And if they came to believe the lies they were told about themselves, they can become resistant, overly defensive and defiant. They believe that any criticism is their fault for being bad, for being a bad person, for upsetting the other person. Any criticism at all can feel more like a judgment on them as a person. Even if that criticism is constructive or helpful, it feels personalised, it feels more like an attack. Scapegoats often develop an inner critic as well. Now, this inner critic will tell them that everything is their fault. It's known as inner scapegoating, and I believe it can be one of the most harmful effects of being scapegoated as a child. Self-blame, self-loathing, constant guilt and shame, low self-worth and a fear of abandonment are quite common with that inner critic. Again, when they behave in a way that drives others away, that self-fulfilling prophecy only serves to reinforce that inner critic, that narrative that they are unlovable and they are unworthy. And as adults, some repeat the same unhealthy patterns from childhood, become drawn to friends, partners that are just as toxic as the parents were. 
Due to their unmet needs as children, many scapegoats um, can sometimes live in a fantasy world where they dream about being rescued, being loved, being admired by an ideal parent figure, a partner or a friend, which can often lead them to being abused and mistreated by these idealised people. Because these people make them accountable for their upset, just like their parents did when they were kids. However, though, unlike the golden child, who is never really allowed to be themselves, is never really allowed to be imperfect. It's all about image. There's no substance to anything. Even as adults, they have no real sense of themselves. This scapegoat normally does have a sense of themselves, even if it is an unhealthy sense of themselves. But they are more able to relate to others on more than just the surface level. Now, although the blaming and shaming, the unkind humour has left its scars, they are able to choose their own path and can have a sense of independence. Many often recognise that their upbringing was unhealthy, it was toxic. Some seek help to help make sense and overcome that toxicity. And it's been my experience that those who do seek help, those who perhaps go to therapy, they find it an eye-opening experience. They can develop self-compassion, self-love. They can learn how to break that trauma bond. Many become quite protective and nurturing towards others that they really care about. Some even go on to develop healthy boundaries, healthy relationships, not just with other people, but with themselves. As adults, the scapegoat can learn that respect has to be mutual. And if love is conditional, then that goes both ways. As adults, they recognise that as far as their siblings go, ultimately it is the golden child who is the damaged one, the tarnished one. Now, I know there are exceptions. Not all golden children end up the same way. But unlike the golden child, they can learn, grow, develop. They can challenge those beliefs that were deeply ingrained. More often than not, the golden child is forever stuck, never really ever having a sense of themselves at all. And unlike some of the other members of the family, they can care, they can have empathy, they can have sympathy. But when they learn healthy boundaries, they can feel that empathy and that compassion, but they recognise they do not own, nor are they necessarily responsible for other people's distress. So there are my thoughts on the adult scapegoat. Now I know everybody's different, there are always exceptions, there's many different directions, there's a lot of things that I haven't covered. But if you have any comments or questions or experiences of your own that you'd like to share, please use the comment box below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.